Hey everybody, it's Brian, and this is an unofficial tutorial. Uh, we are going to cover Flutter. We're going to cover Google sign-in and Flutter authentication with Firebase. However, I'm not going to make like a full-blown tutorial. We're going to actually try to figure out a problem. Um, first off, in case you've been wondering where the heck I've been at, I've been making tutorials out on Udemy.com. Definitely check those out. I know it says it for sale, but if you visit the Void Drums Facebook group, I'm often posting free coupons out there. So if you're a starving college student message me in the Void Drums Facebook group and I will give you a free coupon. All right, so the crux of the matter here is we want to use Firebase authentication. And let me back up just a smidge. Let's say you don't know what Firebase is. Firebase is a on, online, always on, real-time database and storage along with messaging and a whole slew of other analytics attached to it. It's from Google. It's actually kind of amazing. One of the reasons why I picked Flutter is because I highly suspect Google is going to take their Firebase product with their Flutter product and kind of marry them together very tightly, which will make Flutter just hands down one of the best mobile platforms out there. I actually kind of think Flutter's kind of leaning in that direction, but I digress. Anyway, so, what we have before you is a very basic Firebase console. I literally just opened this up and said, I'm new to Firebase, hit me. And we have before us, it wants to get started. We're going to actually build a Firebase, yeah, Firebase Android application, but we want to use Google Sign-In. So there's some prerequisites to this tutorial. First thing, I've got a blank Firebase. I have done very little, if any, modifications. The only modification I have done is I've gone into authentication and I've gone into sign-in method and I have enabled Google sign-in and you'll have to follow the directions on the screen. You'll have to have like a project and some people are kind of weary about showing this information. I don't care because I'm just going to delete all this crap when I'm done. Um, so there's Google and I also did email and password, but we're going to focus on Google authentication. Um, I know there's also like Facebook and Twitter and all this other stuff, which I'm not going to cover in this video. I may cover at some point. So the other prerequisite is that we are going to do an, whoopsie, Android application, not an iOS application because I'm on Linux and I love Linux. So anyways, uh, let me jump over to Android. The prerequisite here with Android Studio is you have to have the Play Store installed on your emulator. I'm using the Nexus 5 with API 27 with Play Store. That means you're going to have to have a valid email address and you're going to have to use a valid Play account and all that stuff and you'll have to set that all up. I've already got the emulator running, hello, right here. So we're going to give that a shot. Whew. That's a lot of prerequisites so far. The other issue is these two packages don't really work well together. Um, if you go out to Firebase Auth and you go into their homepage on GitHub and you go to issues, you see there's some issues going on here. I have been posting a lot of issues because I'm working on the Flutter advanced tutorials on Udemy and this thing is not working and it's just straight up pissing me off. So I thought we would just fix this. I went through and did a lot of stuff and I did figure out how it works. So let's just dive right in and do this. Uh, we're going to create a new project, Flutter. I should note you should probably always do Flutter Doctor. I've done it like four times today. but So let's call this um, Flutter Google because we're going to do a Flutter Google login. And we're going to just hit finish. And it will calculate the trajectory of everything in the known universe. And here we go. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of all this gobbledygook and use the skeleton that I like working with. And then we're just going to run this just to make sure our base application runs out of the box. I should note I'm doing a different video recorder too. I'm using OBS instead of Kazam. So um, if the video seems a little different, let me know if you like it or hate it. I'm still getting a little used to this recorder. It's got some hot keys and I keep hitting them accidentally. So, all right. We verified Flutter works, IntelliJ works, our emulator works, our code on the emulator works. Let's dive into actual packages here. Reading Firebase off, the first thing you need to do is, well, 
you got to get the Google sign-in plugin, which we've already got here. This has some steps in it, which are a little confusing to folks. And I think it's this in a combination with the setup following here that kind of messes this thing up. So there is a Google sign-in uh, instructions. And if you click that, it just literally takes you to the other page that I have here. So we're just going to jump over here. Uh, this is a Flutter plugin for Google Sign-In, blah, 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 a bunch of stuff we're not going to read. Let's just go here and grab our dependencies. Let's jump into our pubspec.yaml. God, I hate this thing. I don't know why that just won't die a slow death. All right, so let's go into pubspec.yaml, grab that, add that in there, save it, do a packages git. Might as well just kill that on the emulator. Now, we're not done. This is where things get a little confusing. We've got some extra work to do. We need to actually go to the readme file and read some stuff. iOS has some configuration stuff. It's got some usage. And what it's saying for Android is that you have to register your application. Um, what does that really mean? What does that really entail? So let's look at this. Of course, it takes us to Firebase, which is where I started down that whole route. So let's jump into Firebase. First thing it wants to do is say, hey, let's do something. So I'm going to add an Android application, and it wants us to register the app. So it needs a package name, a nickname, and debug signing with SHA-1. And let's just dive in here. So package name, it wants to get that out of the app level build Gradle file. So let's go in here, bang, bang. Notice how there's two build gradles. That gets confusing. This is the project build gradle. This is the app because it's in the app folder. We're going to crack that bad boy open, and we want the application ID, this guy right here, com.example.fluttergoogle. Let's jump back to Firebase, and we're just going to paste that in there. We want a nickname. We're just going to give it that right there. This part will just straight out piss you off. Um, Debug signing certificate. It's actually required for this tutorial. How do you get it? If you do this and you right click and open a new tab and see this page, you need something called the key tool. And it even gives you a nifty little blurb here. And you're going to get what's called a SHA-1 or SHA SHA-1 fingerprint. So let's just crank open our terminal. Make sure you have key tool installed. If you don't, you don't have Java installed. So that was my first issue because this was a brand new Linux installation. I completely blew away my desktop and none of this stuff existed. So make sure you have key tool installed. Otherwise, do a Java version. And you should see you have a Java version. Paste in what they tell you to and boom, you get an error message. So we have to fix this. Um, it's saying you can't do multiple commands at once. After some exhaustive creative Googling, I found out you can just simply delete that little bit about export cert and it wants a password. Boom. There is our fingerprints. Notice it's giving us a SHA-1 and a SHA-256. We want the SHA-1. So let's just grab that. Copy that bad boy. Go back in here and paste it in. Um, in case you're a wannabe hacker, no, there's no secret sauce to that. It's just the key tool on my local box, which I'm going to generate a new key tool after this video. So have fun using it. I don't care. Now, <laughs> register the app. This is where things actually get kind of interesting. So we click register, and it wants us to download this JSON file. Why do I say JSON? JSON file. That's the Canadian in me. JSON. It's like saying foot instead of foot. You Canadians know what I'm talking about, but I'm actually American. My family's from Canada. So let's download this JSON file. I know I'm going to get hate mail. Everybody in Canada is going to be like, we don't say JSON, we say JSON. Anyways, show it folder. We're going to grab this and just copy it. In case you're really morbidly curious and want to know what's in there, we can take a quick peek, but we need to put it in a specific location. Notice how we go into the app folder. And this is the confusing bit because this is not a Flutter. That's an Android project, so you'll see a lot of stuff missing there. Let's go in here. We're in our Android folder. We want to go into app, and we want to paste this. It's going to say, are you sure? You're going to say yes. And here's the JSON file in all its glory. This is specific to your application and your Firebase installation. Um, every application will have their own little JSON file. 
that's what I love about Android versus iOS development for this is because it streamlines all of this. You don't have to put any of this nonsense in. It just generates a file and you're good to go. Now, boom, this is the confusing part. We have to add some stuff to our Gradle. All right, so add the Firebase SDK. We're just going to click that. And this says do it in the project build Gradle. So we'll go in here. We'll go into our build on the project side of things. Probably want to expand that out for this. And we're just going to add in our dependencies. Give that a good save. Flip back into here. Now we need to go into the app level build Gradle. So we're going to copy that. And I've got too many windows open. Back up to here. And it's at the very bottom. Bang. Just going to compile Firebase Core. Then we need to apply a plugin of the Google services, the GMS. Copy that. And it says just add it in the bottom, so we'll do that. It's going to apply the plugin. That part is pretty simple. Next, we need to run the app and verify the installation. Notice how it says checking to see if the app's communicated with the server. So we're going to actually build this bad boy, save our work, run it out on the emulator. And we're just going to pull this emulator up. Maybe if I can find it. I've got too many windows open. Bear with me. Bear with me. There it is. This part takes a little bit. And you'll notice um, when it does eventually come up that it even takes a few seconds longer after the application comes up. Um, let me actually flip back over here because it's still building. OK, so the app's up. And it's still thinking. So our app's running, and it's still doing stuff on the back end with Firebase. Now, I think this is just pure latency on Firebase's side. There's some verification checks going on, making sure the app was actually valid, and then the database stores it internally, it replicates out, and then it updates Ajax through the web page. So we're just going to sit here until this thing 100% says it is working. There we go. Congratulations. You've successfully added your app to the Firebase. So we're going to hit Continue. All right. So far, that was pretty painless. We have Google sign-in. And if we wanted to, we could actually go in here, go to this example, paste this code in, and ta-da, it would just work. However, we don't want just Google sign-in. We want Firebase authentication. There's a difference here. Google sign-in allows you to sign in using Google services. Google services are different than Firebase. When you look at Firebase, where's my Firebase? There it is and you look at authentication, you should see user identifications in here. That's separate. You can use Google Sign-In without using Firebase. So what this does is it adds a layer. When I say this, I mean this guy right here. Adds a layer on top of Google Sign-In that allows you to use it through Firebase. You can do the same thing with Twitter, Facebook, and all this other stuff. It uses their underlying um, channels to communicate and to authenticate, and then it just simply updates the Firebase database. This is also where we start getting into trouble. So we're going to grab this. And let's go to our PubSpec YAML. Throw this out here. Bang. Do a good packages git. Might actually want to stop that. And of course, we are not done with the installation. So. Let's just throw this import out here just so our program knows we're using it, even though we're not using it yet. And go back to our readme file. So it says configure the Google sign-in, which we've already done. Import the plugin, which we did. Now we need to actually add some dependencies here in our project level build Gradle. So let's just grab these. Go to our project level build Gradle. Here's our dependencies. And we're just going to paste those in. Right about now, somebody is screaming at their monitor to comment out or delete these. We're just going to leave it for now and let the program figure out what it needs. Save that. And notice at the bottom of the app level, we're going to apply this plugin. We've already done that, so just for verification that it's the same darn thing. We're going to just comment this out. You can see it's the com Google GMS Google services plugin. So we don't want to do that twice. 
this is why, and let me just flutter off Google sign in. There we go. This is where I started getting into trouble here when I was doing the Flutter advanced tutorial. This is where things just deteriorated. If we save this and just try to give this a good build and run, it completely died on me. Yep, see, blah. It says minimum supported Gradle versions 4.4, current versions 4.1. Luckily for us, it gives us how to fix this bad boy. So let's go in here and it says go into this specific file android gradle wrapper gradle properties dot two four four all this is the confusing bit if you're in the actual editor and you want to go into android gradle you see there's no wrapper folder and you're like where'd it go so let's bring up this go to code flutter what are we in flutter google android gradle suddenly there's a wrapper folder so the ide tricks us and hides it from us shame on you ide let's go ahead and open this up in a text editor and you can see here is the offending line gradle 41 and it's requiring 44 so we're going to say 44 all save that now run this again and if I remember correctly, we get an entirely different error message, which just will infuriate you and you'll pick up your keyboard and chuck it across the room or just ninja punch it. Yeah, okay, here we go. So let's expand this out. What went wrong? Failed to notify a dependency resolution listener. Huh? English, what does that mean? The library, blah, 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 play services. You remember that guy we did in the end of our file there? Is being requested by various other libraries at this level here, 1504, 1504, but resolves to 1502. I Googled the heck out of that and could not figure out how to upgrade that. Turns out you don't really need to. So let's play around with this bad boy here. Let's go here and let's go to the very end here. I actually did post it. So we're gonna look at our dependencies here and we're gonna look at that GMS services 4.0. right here. Simply commenting out this fixes the issue. How did I find that out? Dumb luck. I just started commenting out things to see where it started working. So let's bring up our emulator here and we are going to just run this bad boy just to see if we can get a solid build out of this. And this may take a second because it's pulling all that stuff in and compiling it. My chair's getting squeaky. That's going to get annoying. Uh, we got some notes. We're just going to ignore that. And should install the APK, which means it built. And boom, there's our program. So let's actually get Google Sign-In working. Okay, let's go here. And I'm going to cheat, and I'm just going to do the example. I don't like doing this because you have to really pick apart somebody else's coding style and figure out what the heck's going on, but I just want to make sure this thing works. So we're going to completely blow away my code, save this, hot reload's going to of course die, and we're just going to restart this whole thing from scratch and see if it works. What we should have when this thing is done is a nice interface that allows us to do Google sign in through Firebase and still update the Firebase backend. All right, so we're gonna test sign in with Google. And it says choose an account, voidrum05, that's my dummy account, don't ever email me because I'll never answer you. And we've successfully signed in. Boom, sign in with Google succeeded. Let's check our Firebase backend and see what it actually looks like here. And this is the part that's got me a little dumbfounded. It doesn't actually show Oh, there it is, yep, voidroom05 at Gmail. So now we have our user ID on our Firebase backend with our Google provider and everything is working as expected. And we can copy the UID and all that stuff. So 
I'm sorry there wasn't a whole lot of typing in here, but this has actually taken me about a week to really figure out why none of this crap was working. And I've been going back and forth on the GitHub page trying to figure it out. So that is how everything works. So if you've at this point and you're really stuck, the big thing to really take away here is, whoopsie, where did I do it? Where did I do it? I just screwed that all up, didn't I? Yeah, I'm in the wrong file, aren't I? Boom, here it is. In the project level build Gradle, just comment out that service is 4.0. Make sure you're doing the Gradle 4.4 all in the specific Gradle wrapper properties file, and then it should just work, assuming you have set up the project correctly. The other big takeaway from this is if you skip that step with uh, your application setup and you didn't put in a SHA-1 because you didn't want to screw around the key tool or any of that, this will not work. You need that SHA-1 in your application. That's it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you for being very patient with me as I'm still grinding away with videos. I know I haven't posted anything in Void Realms in a while, so I wanted to throw this out here first. This is going to be part of a larger thing in the Udemy tutorials I'm going to make. I should say I'm in the process of making Flutter Advanced. There's going to be six sections, and I'm on section five right now, which is Intro to Firebase, which is going to cover a lot of what we just talked about. And then section six is going to be like Firebase Storage, Firebase Real-Time Database, how to get information up in there and back and forth. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you later.